when I talk with landowners that have questions about how wide or deep our waterway waterway designs end up being, they, they base their findings on what an average year has in terms of rain. So they, they see, you know, a you know, average year where they don't have a, a large rain event. So they they kind of assume that, well, I don't need a very big waterway because, you know, I, it's very rare that I have a, a large rain event. Well, when we, when we invest taxpayers' money into building these structures, we need to have a, have a, a, a baseline for construction. And the way we do that is what we consider a 10-year storm event, which is roughly around five inches of rain in a 24-hour period. If we design the waterway for a, you know, a, just a, an average rainfall event, it would be too small. And if we had that 10-year storm event, it would, it would go around that waterway and, and basically make it not function anymore. And you'd have gullies going alongside the base. So we really wouldn't be doing them any service by making it small for the average rainfall. And the issue with sizing waterways is, is the drainage area, the grade of the waterway, and, and what shape you have the waterway, the parabolic or trapezoidal. The slope of the waterway is, is how you determine um, the, the shape and size of the waterway. The flatter the waterway is, the flatter the grade, the bigger you need to make the waterway. Because the, when the waterway comes through and you picture a storm event and the water comes through and it's on a flat grade, it doesn't move away fast enough. So the water stacks up on itself and it's moving very slowly. So therefore you need to have, a really, you need to have enough capacity to hold that water that's coming through. Uh, compare that to a, a, a steeper grade, a steeper sloped waterway, that water can't stack up as fast. It's moving away very fast as it's coming in, so you don't need a bigger waterway. So the flatter the grade, the bigger and deeper the waterway you need. The bigger the watershed, the, the bigger the waterway you'll need, the bit more capacity you'll need to handle the amount of water that's going to come through in a storm event. This waterway right here is a trapezoidal waterway. It has a flat bottom and then it has side slopes on it of 8 to 1 side slopes. So, so every foot that you go up in elevation you need to go out 8 feet out so you have a nice broad area so that they can cross it without having an abrupt bank. Trapezoidal waterways uh, are good waterways. They have more capacity than the general waterway shape that we call parabolic that's dish shaped. It's important to get the bottom of the trapezoidal waterway the same elevation across. That's, that's the most important part because as you can see here this one is fairly flat but it's certainly not even all the way across. And the water is going to go in the lowest spot and it's going to snake around and move around and once it starts that moving it's going to start gullying out. So it, maintenance is a really big issue with these flat bottom trapezoidal waterways. Parabolic waterways, you know, the low is in the center of the waterway. So on the, on the small rain events where you do have a, you know, the, a, a bit of water coming through the waterway, it's less likely to snake around because it's only going to be in the center of the waterway if it's constructed correctly. But the, the benefit of a trapezoidal waterway compared to a parabolic is, is that it holds more water. It can handle more, more water coming through than a trapezoidal waterway of the same shape. And actually, this trapezoidal waterway is smaller than what a, tra a parabolic waterway would have been for this watershed. Uh, as you can see, what they're doing now, they're putting in tile alongside of the waterway. That's a, a very important part of constructing a waterway, especially when you have uh, wetland type soils, which are generally in waterways. There's very few waterways that uh, don't have hydric soils, so we need to dry out the waterway so we can have good vegetation establishment uh, get, get established. And the best way to do that is by putting tile on the bank of the waterway. Generally the tile goes in around three feet deep uh, on that bank, so what we want for that tile, we want to have that tile to suck you know, the water away from the, the center of the waterway and to keep it dry. It definitely increases the, the lifespan of the waterway just for the simple fact that it, it dries it out and lets the vegetation get established. Having good vegetation cover on your waterway is critical. Very, it's, it's critical for the establishment of the waterway. 
Waterway outlets are a, a very important part of designing the waterway because you have to have the, the water that comes out of the waterway come out in a non-erosive manner and if you have any any elevation difference from the the outlet to the where it comes out out you you do have to fix that either with a outlet structure or you grade it out now that's where you get to this cost benefit type of issue is that outlet structures cost a lot of money uh, uh, a regular average cost for an outlet structure is close to five thousand dollars to do it, and the the issue we have too, you could use you with the cost between a say aluminum tow wall structure or a rock chute, is is that it costs a lot of money to haul the rocks to the area to build your rock chute. Now, if you have the rocks on, you know, if you have a lot of glacial glacial boulders on hand, you can use them if they're the suitable size. Um, then it's somewhat cheaper. But if you have to haul the rocks to the site, it costs as much as putting in, say, like an aluminum toll wall structure or, or a, a concrete structure. So the, the cost of these outlets really, really uh, is quite expensive for the landowner. The, the waterway shaping itself is not too, too costly, but the outlet structures do, do have to be uh, looked into before you start getting them an estimate or going on a waterway construction project. Well, the cost of doing nothing is constantly fixing the problem. You know, it, it, it's not going to go away. It will eventually creep into their field. The gully will keep moving back into the field, and they will always have to do maintenance to it. They'll have to either fill it in or, or put rocks in it to try to slow it down, but it will always be a problem. So they need to fix it with a, a permanent type of structure like a rock chute or a or aluminum toll wall or, 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 or any type of outlet structure that we can design for them. It, it's going to cost more but overall it will cost less than constantly doing maintenance for it because if they figure up all the time it takes to fill it in and to put rocks in there and do it every single year it would be more cost effective to spend the money up front and put in some stable structure than to constantly repair it. Not a, let alone how much soil they're going to lose every time the, they have a storm event and they have water running down the waterway and the overfall working its way back up into their waterway.